up guys, cheers! Um, welcome to part 2 of the airbrushing basics. So at this stage, I assume you got your brand new airbrush, whatever that may be, whatever brand that may be, the, the one you've chosen for yourself. Um, and you just took delivery of it and you're looking at it and you're wondering what do I do with this thing, how do I get started on that thing. So I think the first thing we should do is take it apart. <laughs> Sounds like a bad idea, doesn't it? Well, it's not that scary. Let me um, try to break it down for you as easily and simply as I can and uh, explain what I did when I got my first airbrush and hopefully uh, that will make it easier for you uh, to understand what I mean. Welcome to part two. Now let's have a look what should we do when you get your uh, brand new airbrush, whatever brand that's going to be. What I would recommend you to do and, um, and start with this way. Uh, first things first, uh, what I did, and I think that's uh, pretty much um, a necessity, it's take it apart. But only take it apart so far, you don't want to take everything apart. So, uh, some airbrushes come with like protective cap, just a plastic cap that goes on top of it. And, um, and that's your airbrush, ready to use, right? Well, not really. Uh, what I recommend is getting some kind of uh, needle lubricant. I've got a bunch of needle juice over here. Some kind of oil, you can use machine oil probably, some very light oil to lubricate all the parts. So, first you need to take it apart. There are plenty of tutorials out there how to do it properly. So you remove the back of the airbrush. Um, there's a needle chuck over here that holds the needle, you loosen it slightly and you can very gently remove the needle from the back. And there's another reason I really like uh, the Badger airbrush, this Patriot, because needle on the back has got like a really big uh, handle, you know. I know it's silly, yeah, but if you drop a needle on a, like this, try to pick it up. <laughs> try to pick it up uh, with your fingers when it's usually covered in the paint when you don't have this thing, you know. This thing is uh, very handy actually. So that's the needle. And then on the front, you remove the, that's called the crown, the very, uh, the very front of the uh, uh, airbrush. Um, they come in different sizes and different shapes as well. Some of them completely obstructing the needle uh, for protection. A lot of people take them off, but this one is actually part of the design. It wouldn't work without it. So that's the crown. Then you remove the holder from the nozzle. There we go. Anytime now, there we go. So that's the second part. It's got little holes over here, if you can see them. Not only the main hole, but little holes over here. That's actually where the air goes through and atomizes with the paint. And when you open, pull the needle back, then when the paint comes in through that hole over here, but the air actually comes through those little holes here, this way. And then we got the nozzle itself. And again, this, trust me, this is a really big nozzle. Um, it's uh, very specific to this airbrush. Um, on the other one I've got over there, the very detailed airbrush, the nozzle is only like a one or two mil from the top. It's only this small. So imagine dropping that somewhere, you know, in your garage. You're never going to find this. So luckily this one is, uh, that's a really large nozzle. You're never going to lose this one, hopefully. But all the other ones are way, way smaller. Be very careful with that. Yeah, you want to keep that safe and keep that clean. The other thing you can take apart over here is on the back of the airbrush. All the mechanism that holds it, uh, that makes basically the spring action possible, right? So you want to take the other part, be very careful again on those parts. If you're not confident with it, make sure you got operation manual, instructions manual, so showing all the parts where they are. You don't need to take this apart completely, there's a spring inside, you can do, but there's no point at this stage. And the very last thing is the actual trigger. There you go. And there's usually some kind of saddle on the back that is also removable. At any other point, you don't need to remove any other parts from the airbrush. Over here, you got the uh, air valves and some kind of bearings in some other ones and some, some other mechanism in there that is releasing the, the pressure from the air and all that stuff. Uh, I've got an adapter over here that you can release, that you can remove this as well. That's an adapter and that's another adapter. I've got, I don't want to remove it right now at the moment, but that was an adapter for the quick release. 
but you don't need to take apart any other of this stuff in there. If you do, you will most likely uh, void the warranty on the airbrush, uh, but if you do need to take it apart, you need some replacement parts. In this case, you probably need to send your airbrush for warranty to be repaired if any of those components are faulty. So don't play with that. Right, so um, very, very basically, I you know, um, how you take your airbrush apart, how you put it back together, you basically go back as you did. And all the airbrushes, if I take this apart, it's gonna have exactly the same thing components. They may look a little bit different, and maybe one less or one more of uh, some other extra, you know, com compartments, components, whatever. But they, uh, this is a very basic, this is how it should look like. This is what you, ha what you need, this is what you have. Um, to put it back together, if your airbrush is brand new, I would recommend using some kind of lubricant basically a drop on every kind of thread over here i mean your engine in a motorcycle you wouldn't run it without the uh, without the oil in it now would you uh it's the same with the airbrush everything will work works much smoother so i put like a half a drop on each thread over here on each component over there and i just work it gently making sure it's nicely lubricated everywhere over here inside there lubricate all the threads over here and they're just going to make the airbrush so much better performing in every way it's going to be so much easier and that goes to everything every single thread like this component i just put a drop of my lubricant you know very light oil engine oil whatever that is and making sure that's nicely lubricated um these threads are very very fragile as well you don't want to over tighten them you know but putting some lubricant on it it also is going to help the other thing is uh, is a must have when you are an airbrush artist is a ptfe tape and have a lot of it um if your airbrush is brand new i would not well you're not going to hurt it if you put some um, ptfe tape around the uh, joints like uh, the front over here and when i got my adapter to prevent all the air leaks um, i wouldn't do it in the very first time maybe just put it back together as it is you know as it came from a factory um, and test it you know if you listen for any air leaks if you connect your compressor to it listen whether it's leaking uh, put it in the close to you whether the air is escaping somewhere you'll be able to hear it whether the air is escaping somewhere if it is uh, disconnect the air supply and you can use very uh, um, little of the uh, PTFE tape the plumber's tape and wrap it around the uh, uh, the front of the um, of the nozzle or um, or over here around the joint when you're connecting your adapters and all that stuff you can just rip this tape very gently you no know, little bit of strings of it and even wrap it around the uh, the uh, the crown over here just like one layer just to prevent all the uh, air leaks just to keep it air air sealed and airtight as as much as possible and obviously on top of that you can still use your um, your lubricant put a tape once you wrap it around the joint the thread put a little bit of uh, uh, your needle juice and that will help to prevent leaks and it will help to uh, uh, put it back together you know uh, much much easier yeah, and that's a very good exercise as well because uh, you will be needing cleaning your airbrush um, quite often and uh, in-depth cleaning like this is also uh, necessary sometimes, um, not after every use, but I, I clean my airbrush often and before every major job I always take it apart, lubricate all the parts, make sure everything is clean, straight, um, make sure the needle is straight, don't drop it, don't bend it, don't uh don't try to pierce anything with it it's a very fragile if your needle is bent on the front uh, the tip of the needle most likely you will need to replace your needle uh, it's very very unlikely you'll be able to bend it back to its uh, factory standard same with the nozzle if your nozzle has been uh, damaged you most likely will need to replace it right now we are putting it back together so i like to start with a nozzle everything has been lubricated uh, I'm not going to bother with tape this time, I usually put tape around it because I know I got some air leaks after the years. But anyway, nozzle in its place. Then the other component goes down here. Finger tight, finger tight guys. This is so delicate, you know, and so precise. Very rarely you need to use any tools on it. Sometimes you got like a spanner for the uh, very small uh, supplied spanner by the manufacturer but this is all finger tight you don't need anything more than fingers on this look how small and delicate the thread on that instrument is so everything is just finger tight tight enough and if you put some PTFE tape on it it will be definitely uh, airproof there we go 
Next thing uh, I put is um, the saddle that the trigger sits on. That can be a little bit tricky sometimes and depends on the design of your airbrush. Uh, it can vary from uh, thing to thing. Um, the trigger, the trigger, the most important thing is you got a hole in the middle of the trigger that the needle goes through. So don't put it this way because the needle will not go through it. You need to go this way when the needle goes. Um, pump it down to the air release uh, mechanism over there and there you go. That's uh, your trigger assembled. Be careful right now because it can still drop when you turn around, see? So you need to put the needle in there first. Once this is in place, the uh, the back piece, I can't remember how it's called, the whole thing. There are probably some professional out there that they know exactly how it's called, but you know what? It don't, never bothered me. So yeah, screw this in all the way back. Make sure the mechanism of the spring can be pulled back all the way. So very gently screw it in, just with your fingers, and you will see the trigger will move forward move it all the way until it stops there you go, it stops, I'm not even putting any pressure on it, I just go with my two fingers stops, now test it gently goes back, nice and smooth action good stuff, next thing needle make sure the needle chuck that's basically the part that holds the needle together, it's got like a two pinching points over here so the more you screw it back in the it's getting tighter, so that holds your needle together in, in that mechanism. So very gently put the needle back from the back <laughs> and uh, while I'm pushing it in I'm twisting it gently and if you feel any kind of resistance, any pressure, stop go back and have a look what's the obstruction. But if you did everything correctly you should just go in smooth like that. And right on the end you will see it, where are we? We will see it will come out from uh, can you see it right yeah you will come out from the then where are we <laughs> from a tip I need to get a good angle so you can guys see it there we go right so needle is out and there you go and once it stop don't try to force it don't try to force it back in I mean uh, any further than this uh, just have it there stop and then retighten the uh, needle chuck and again, you don't need to lean on it, just two fingers, gentle pressure, and the needle is in place. And now your needle works with the whole mechanism of the trigger. See? There we go. And the last thing you want to do is put the, uh, the handle, the back of the airbrush. Some people leave it off because they think the airbrush is lighter this way and they can control it better. I like it on. I like it on it protects the components a little bit and it adds extra weight. I like extra weight on my airbrushes. Uh it's something I can hold on to, I don't know. And it can rest on the back of my uh hand again sometimes when I'm airbrushing. It's uh it, I just like it. Some people leave it off. You see many airbrush artists um using their airbrushes just like that. It's lighter or uh, they prefer it this way, easier access for the needle. I I don't. I like it there. So uh your choice. Right, that's my quick release adapter. And I'm ready to rock and roll. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, there we go. So our airbrush is lubricated, is oiled, is ready for action. You're not afraid what to do with it, you're not afraid to, to take it apart, which you will need to do quite often to clean it in depth, you no know, cleaning, you know, um, of the dried up paint and all that stuff. Most of the times when your airbrush is not performing, um, 9 out of 10, the reason is behind it is there is some dried out paint, uh, usually on a nozzle or on the tip of the needle or somewhere in a, in a, in a cup and something is not working properly. So uh, before you go on the forums and try to research why is not spray pattern is not okay or is not performing as you should be, uh, take it apart, give it a good clean, make sure it's all fully looped, there's no air leaks, it's air sealed and tight and um, that should hopefully solve the problem. Uh, yeah, if you are very very new to this, take your take your gun apart as many times as you want, put it back together, be very careful with it, make sure you got manuals. If you're very very scared to do so, 
just take pictures along while you do that or even take a video where you take things apart so that you can come back to the reference and put it back together as it should be as i said taking apart it like this it's general maintenance and cleaning you shouldn't have you shouldn't be able to break anything if you're being very careful with it so don't worry it's safe to do uh, that's it for part two guys on part three I'm hoping to hook up this airbrush to the little compressor we've got over there we're gonna pump some air through it and see what kind of damage we can do on a piece of paper <laughs> until then guys thank you very much for watching have a bit rock hard and I'll see you next time